I've covered animation libraries a lot on this channel, and there's been a ton going on, from new minimal ways of doing things to hacking into Tailwind to all sorts of other solutions. But today's solution isn't actually a new solution. It's an old one. And it's not just any old one, it's kind of become the standard. For React, Framer Motion's kind of been the only real responsible way to have fancy animations in your apps for entry, exit, and all the fun transitions that we like to build. Framer Motion is a phenomenal library built by Framer, a company kind of trying to compete with Figma, but they're also trying to do code gen. It's Framer's a weird product. Framer Motion is a great open source library for React devs, but Framer isn't Framer Motion. It's been really confusing for a while, and it's also been very React specific. Today, all of that changes because Matt from Framer just left, made Motion its own full separate thing, and they're now going to support every framework, not just React. I am so excited to dive into this with y'all. It's a huge change for how we build animations and nice experiences on the web, and I can't wait to show all of this. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is me because I couldn't get an ad in time for this. Turns out having two plus videos a day is kind of hard to maintain sponsors for. If you're interested in filling spots like this in the future, getting your brand put in front of the most talented senior plus developers watching YouTube, period, let me know. Hit us up, youtube at t3.gg. Fair Motion is now independent. Introducing Motion. First, some personal news. Next week will be my last at Framer. Writing this feels pretty wild. Making Framer Motion has been the best job of my life. To do so for six years with the best product team in the world, both a massive learning experience and a privilege. However, this leads to some news that I'm incredibly excited to share. With Framer's blessing and support, Framer Motion is now completely independent. I'm spinning it off into its own project to better serve the whole community. Introducing Motion. What's changing? There are two big changes to highlight. The first is Motion's brand new home here at motion.dev. Besides a fresh new design, it finally has a much requested search. Excited to explore the page with you. But also I, I just noticed, look at how the top nav blur effect works on things. It turns them into like a grid, like refracted, like refracted glass. They go so hard on these things unnecessarily. It's so cool. How are they doing that? Is that a PNG or? Yeah, it's a mask pattern that they made as a background image radial gradient programmed here with CSS. These guys know their design and you'll see little things like that throughout all of Framer and Motion's work. It's super cool. Back to the article though. The second big change is a request from the community. For a long time, users have asked to use Framer Motion outside of React, either with vanilla JS or other frameworks like Vue. Today, Motion becomes more than a React library with an amazing set of vanilla APIs that bring Motion's hybrid engine and extensive feature set to everyone. In the coming weeks and months, more features from Framer Motion will make their way to this new vanilla API, and I'll be writing new integration guides that help people use them everywhere. Beyond that, expect improved support and documentation, a stronger community, and a renewed focus on developer-facing features. Why is this happening? This news might surprise many, but I think in context, it's the natural and obvious next step for Motion. Six years ago, Framer bought my project Pop Motion because they wanted a simple React API, unlimited flexibility, and smooth animations across all devices. As Framer moved from prototyping into sites, these animations only became more important because now they're being shared with millions of monthly visitors. But Motion also became wildly successful in its own right, becoming the go-to React animation solution with over 4.5 million weekly downloads on NPM. The number, like, like Framer Motion is so prolific, it's kind of nuts. Also, if somebody in chat can remember, there was another thing like this that somebody from Framer broke off and made. It's like animation.dev or something that I can't remember the name of. Anyways, it's a part of Framer, but it's also a part from Framer, serving a much wider set of users. It's kind of as a thing that like this library exists as, as part of Framer, but its majority use exists well outside of it. It always felt weird because this library was so prominent but it wasn't really funneling into Framer's success directly. Like they were, it made the Framer product more confusing for me, honestly. Having them separate helps clarify what both are. We feel like the best way to ensure Motion's future as a core driver of animations on not just Framer sites or just React sites, but for all sites, is to spin out as an independent open source project for the community. For Motion, the high demands of Framer in terms of capability and performance have made Motion the product that it is today. So Framer users can rest assured that their animations will continue to be powered by Motion in the future. Spinning out Motion's a bold move by Framer, and I'm super delighted that they're on board as Motion's first sponsor. Huge. I hope that this gets more sponsors. This is a really important project. So I just went down a fun rabbit hole trying to remember the name of something that I knew came out from the Framer folks, specifically the Framer Motion folks, trying to make something 
that was not using JavaScript for as much of the animation and using the web animations API more because Framer Motion was built before a lot of those APIs existed and a lot of the code there uses JS to do the animations. Motion One was announced in 2021, and I remember this dropping, and that's why I was so confused, because I knew this happened, and they had announced that they were working on a new minimal library that just did browser standard animations. But this used to be what was on motion.dev, Motion One. Now Motion One is the new Motion. But if I, um, way back machine, yeah, this is what I was thinking. Motion.dev used to be this, which was tiny size, huge performance, a new animation library built on the web animations API. I was really hyped when this dropped. I thought it was super cool. Everything was really simple, well-made. I was hyped. Also tiny compared to things like GreenSock, it, even tinier when you compare it to OG Motion. But yeah, I don't. I think it's dead because when I found the GitHub, they archived this project, funny enough, yesterday, <laughs> which is interesting because it seems like Motion is now focused on the centralized main Motion library, not one or any of these other tools. I wish that they would call it what happened to one. Maybe they say what happened to it in the blog. Regardless, Motion is now its own separate library, and I'm guessing all the learnings from there are going to come over to here. So what's next? Honestly, I have a long list of things I want to do. The hard part will be picking what's first. New APIs built on emerging browser features like view transitions, bringing the power of Motion's industry-leading layout engine to the new vanilla API, high-level components that are both beautiful and accessible, better dev tools, plugins for popular design tools, etc. Realistically, for Motion to thrive, I first need to make it sustainable. If you or your company already finds value from it, consider a sponsorship. I know a lot of you companies are doing the OSS pledge now. At least I hope so. The open source pledge is a thing that was started by Sentry, meant to kickstart companies helping fund these open source projects. It's a pledge that a company can take agreeing to put at least $2,000 per year per dev at the company into open source. All these companies have already contributed and are promising to continue. So if you need places to throw that money, if you're making the pledge, this is a good place to. Apparently Tailwind has already sponsored them too, which is really cool to see. Tailwind plus Motion is a nice combo, so hype to see them working together like that. Anyways, whatever's next, I'm beyond excited for the next chapter. And if you're an existing Motion 1 or Framer Motion user, I hope you are excited too. Here's the next six years. Hype. Huge. I want to see the new homepage though that killed Motion 1. Also, the domain, motion.dev. Woo! I don't get domain envy much nowadays, but that's so good. That's up there with myimage.engineering, which I still haven't used for anything, but we'll get there. Motion makes animations simple, fun, and limitless. Go beyond the browser with super smooth springs, layout animations, timelines, and much, much more. I'm sure if I scroll, it will... No? Oh, so they respect accessibility settings like the request for reduced motion, which is why nothing was moving on the page initially. And when I went and toggled that setting, suddenly everything started moving again. And I bet if I hit that, I have to refresh after. Yeah. Now it doesn't work. Now it does. More we will need to respect those settings. Anyways, this is how simple the code is. Vanilla JavaScript, you tell it the target, tell it what to do. Or using a motion.div in React, same deal. And this is how motion works. It's, it's alternatives to the DOM elements where you put motion dot in front. A now motions JS layer can take over and it can identify when things are added and removed from the DOM to do all the things you might need to do. One of those things that almost no other library supports properly, exit animations, where removing something from the DOM won't just disappear it, it will have an animation on its way out. Doing this in React sucks so hard because to fade out an element when it's removed, you actually have to keep it in the virtual DOM and the real DOM for a bit, do the animation, and then when the animation is done, you have to remove it. It's one of the few things that the React mental model doesn't really work for. Entry animations are easy, because when you render it for the first time, you just have it fade in or do whatever. But when you remove the element, you have to have it stay there for a bit, which is really, really hard to do the way React works. Motion just handles it. And hopefully other frameworks will get the benefit from this super, super simple syntax as well. Like to this day, if I needed good exit animations on something I was building with React, I don't know how I would do it without Framer. Straight up. I just have no idea. It would be hellish layers of code, keeping track of references and making sure things are properly removed once the end. Ugh, I don't need... I'm thinking about it and it is stressing me out. So we're going to move on. <laughs> Layout animations. Also very, very helpful. Switching between different layouts. Now with view transitions in the browser, you can DIY things like this. But before then, 
not fun. And this makes it way easier. You also, of course, have gestures. So when you move over this, it does things and I can even grab it and drag it around. And when dragging, it makes it smaller. All of that just baked in. So nice. And of course, timelines. Very useful when you want to do multiple things in order. So the unordered list, so the list itself has to fade in and each item in it needs to start at y negative 20 and then move to zero staggered 0.2 seconds between each of them. So nice. So nice. Where this has to fade in, then these have to run one at a time with a delay between them. Such nice syntax to draw, describe really difficult things. Wow. Emil, personally sponsored and linear, already jumped on. Not surprising. They have a whole gallery of cool things using it if you want to check it out. And of course, in case it wasn't clear, I think I mentioned this before, but in case I somehow forgot, it's obviously all open source. So you can go hop in here and play with all of the packages, look at the code, use the library, and use the source to go make your own version. So if you want to have this in Svelte or Angular or any other framework, you have the pieces. You can build it yourself now. It's actually really, really cool. And having search in the docs finally is huge. I can't believe they got away without this before. And of course, when you start typing in it, the little animation, the way it came up, it's so good. Oh, oh, oh. The best part of these sites are the little animation. Oh, it's so nice. I've always been pretty hyped about Framer Motion. Haven't used it as much as I probably should have. But now that I know it's being maintained this well and long term, there's really cool stuff coming. I'm more hyped than I've ever been. Does this mean I'm going to stop covering new cool animation libraries? Absolutely not. Y'all love those videos. But for now, this is the pretty obvious, easy recommendation. If you're using React and you're building animations into your tools, you probably should at least consider Framer Motion. But now it's going to be around for a while. I am super hyped. I hope you guys are as well. Until next time, peace nerds.